number you have dialed has been changed. I fickle my heart and have wounds in my eyes. I struggle to find the truth in your lies. And now my heart stumbles on things I don't know. The weakness I feel is finally shown. When you realize I can change what you see. But your soul you must keep totally free. Welcome to a little bit of Sugar Radio Show. Put your feet up, snuggle in, here we go. This is episode two, A Really Nice Blizzard, by Patrick F. McManus. Henry P. Grogan, proprietor of Grogan's War Surplus, glanced up from his cash register as crazy Eddie Muldoon and I bolted to the front door of his establishment. Mr. Grogan, we need to buy a parachute. A parachute? What you boys need a parachute for? And why ain't you in school? You fellas playing hooky. No, we're not playing hooky, I said. They let us out early when the blizzard got too dangerous for us kids to stay at school. We've got to hurry, because the school bus leaves to take us home in 15 minutes. Well, I don't know about selling a parachute to two full kids. You probably got some notion jumping off a barn roof with it, ain't you? Get yourself killed or worse doing something like that. No, I wouldn't feel right about it. We got over seven dollars between us. Crazy Eddie said, looking the proprietor right in the eye. Well then, I have been wrong before. Let me see your money. That was one of the things I liked about Crazy Eddie and Mr. Grogan. They both knew how to do a deal. As Eddie and I hurried toward the door with our parachute, Grogan called after us. Just out of, out of curiosity, boys, what are you going to do with that parachute? Oh, I said, because we got out of school on account of the blizzard, Eddie and I thought we would rig a sail with a parachute on a sled and sail across a field. This is the only good blizzard we might get this year, and we didn't want to waste it. Sounds reasonable to me. I always did like a good blizzard myself. When we got home and tried to hook up the sail to my sled, we discovered that rigging a mast with an old 2 by 4 and a broom handle just wasn't easy. We struggled with the contraption until we were both half frozen. Finally, I said, We'd better get up to Rancid to help us. He'll know how to hook up a sail. Rancid knows how to just do about everything. Crazy Eddie and I tramped through the blizzard to Rancid's shack and covered with a snow veneer, burst in without bothering to knock. The old woodsman was standing by his barrel stove, stirring something in a frying pan with a hunting knife. He leaped back with a knife raised in the stabbing position and yelled, Aig! Aig! Later he told us that yelling, Aig! Aig! in a shrill voice is a good way to confuse evil forest spirits until you can think of a good way to deal with them. Gall dang and tarnation! Ain't you fellas ever heard about knocking? Why, in another second, I might have had your guts all over the floor. Chop both of you into tiny little pieces. I got lightning relaxes. Annie and I shook off our coating of snow onto Ranson's floor and rushed over to warm our hands by his stove. Why can't the two of you shake off the snow outdoors? Now it's just melt and turn to mud. I'll be slipping and sliding on it all day. You raised in a barn? Sorry, I said. We were just about frozen. Anyway. What we want is to have you help us build something we can use to sail on the snow. We've got a parachute for the sail. It'll work great in this blizzard. Hmm, Ranson said. Let me think about a spell. You boys want something to eat? I got plenty to go around. I, I don't think I said. Sure, Crazy Eddie said. I'm stopped. He never yet had the experience of eating with Rancid. Rancid blew the dust off a couple of tin plates he kept for guests and scraped out a glob for each of us from the skillet. He ate his share out of the skillet with the hunting knife. This is pretty good, Mr. Crabtree, Eddie said. What is it? As best I can recollect, it's some chopped up bar meat, bird taters, beans, a chunk of hog fat and, uh, let's see, oh, some dried wild mushrooms and a couple of squirrels. Why, you think your mama might want the recipe? She might, Eddie said. 
She wouldn't use the wild mushrooms, though, because she can't tell the difference between the good ones and the poison ones. He chuckled, presumably at his mother's ignorance of wild mushrooms. Ransom joined him in the chuckle. That's okay. I can't tell him part neither. You can't? Eddie croaked, staring down at the few little bites left on his plate. Nope, I can't. But don't you worry none. I always test wild mushrooms on my dog's sport. If he likes them and he don't drop dead, I eat some myself. If anyone batched these mushrooms a couple hours ago, here, sport. Come show Eddie where you ain't dead. Sport. Here, sport. Sport. Where is that dang dog? He always comes when I call him. Eddie rose slowly from his chair, wild-eyed and suddenly pale. I stared uneasily at him as he selected a finger to put down his throat. Don't do it, Eddie, I said. I'm still eating. Besides, Rancid doesn't have a dog. After we had all had a good laugh over the mushrooms and Ransom's mythical dog, Eddie and I presented our idea about the sailing parachute to the old woodsman. Well, if there's one thing I know about is parachutes. I done a lot of parachuting in the Great War. General used to have me drop behind enemy lines to do spine work. I never tell you about the time. You did. But what about the parachute as a sail in the blizzard? A sled won't work. The sled will cut through the snow crust, and you're just stuck tight in a fly on a stun spoon. You need something flat on the bottom, something like a big pan. Shoot, Eddie said. Right now, we've got this great big blizzard and no way to use it. Hold on a sec. Hot dang, I think I just might have the thing. He stomped outside and soon returned with a large, curved metal object. He banged the snow off of it into the floor, and his enthusiasm apparently having forgotten about turning the floor to mud. What is it? I asked. Fender off an old wrecked truck, then keeping it out in the yacht. Figured some use would turn up for it, and, well, here it is. Eddie and I shouted with joy and relief. We would be able to put the blizzard to good use after all. Rancid was a person who could never take a good idea and leave it alone. He had to improve on it. Eddie's plan had been for us to sail across the open fields on the icy crust, furnished to a high polish by the wind and driven snow. Rancid, however, said the best idea would be to hike over to the old market road. It's just one long strip of shiny ice, he said. It's so slick that there won't be nobody driving on it, that's for sure. We can have it all to ourselves. But what about a mast? Eddie said. Won't need no mast, boy. I'll show you how it's done. We cut through the woods to the old market road, and sure enough, there was not a vehicle on it as far as we could see through the driving snow. Off in the distance, an undisturbed snowdrift slanted across the road. We had to lean into the wind in order to stand, and even then our feet skittered along on the snow-polished ice. It was slick. Rancid threw the fender down with a metallic kwump. Which one of you boys wants to go first? Let me try, Crazy Eddie said. Getting no argument from me, he climbed into the cavity of the upside-down fender and lay down on his belly. There ain't no way to do it. Get up out of there and let me show you how. Rancid got in the fender, sitting upright. They hand me to pass you, honest. For an old experienced parachuter, he didn't seem to know much about putting on the harness, but I suppose so much time had passed since the Great War that he had forgotten. Finally, he simply tied various straps of the harness around his waist and let it go at that. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Then he grabbed a cluster of shroud lines in each hand like so many reins. Now, here's the idea, he said. Eddie... You take the bundle of pads, shoot out in front. And when I gives the signal, you throw the chute open so the wind can catch it. Pat, you push on the back of the fender to get me going, so the chute can push me along. I I'll show you how it's done, then you fellas can give it a try. Crazy Eddie and I, slipping and sliding on the icy road and fighting against the fierce wind, took up our assigned positions. Okay, ready? Yeah! yeah! 
Eddie and I yelled against the pound and wind. On the count of three, then. One, two, three. Eddie and I skated along the road, driven by the wind at our backs. There was no sign of rancid, except an occasional blasted-out snowdrift marked by a spray of tobacco juice and claw marks that looked as if they might have been made by human hands. After a while, we stopped at a farmhouse and knocked. A skinny old man in bib overalls and a flannel shirt opened the door and stared down at us. What in nation you boys doing out in a storm like this? You look half frozen. Come in here by the fire and thaw out. Thanks, I said, but we were looking for our friend, Rancid Crabtree. He went by here on the road about half an hour ago. The farmer scratched his jaw. Nope, can't say I seen anybody go by. You're looking for Crabtree, you say. What was he driving? An upside-down truck fender. Yes, I said. And he was wearing a parachute and... Mavis! The farmer called out to his wife. Better put some hot chocolate on for these boys. I think the cold's about got them. How you feeling anyway, fellas? I don't feel so good. But I think it may have been some poison mushrooms I ate for lunch. I see said the farmer. Poison mushrooms. Hurry up with that chocolate, Mavis. After the hot chocolate, and not knowing anything else to do, Eddie and I returned to Rancid Shack. Much to our relief, the old woodsman came in in a short while, looking like a tattered icicle in more or less human form. The cut ends of the parachute harness dangled from his snow-caked waist. You don't look too good, Mr. Crabtree. Crazy Eddie said, with rare understatement. Rancid sank down on a chair and dug some snow out from his whitened ears with a blue finger. Oh, yeah, he snarled. Well, you wouldn't either. You been blowed halfway across the gall dang county in a truck fender. I'd still be going if it hadn't been the good fortune to get snarled by that barbed wire fence. God, don't torn near dang to shreds. As he ran it on, I heard a sad sound from outside. With one last thrust at tearing the shakes from the roof, the wind dropped away with a rattling moan. The blizzard was dying. It had been a fine blizzard, and I was sorry to see it pass away.